Western-backed opposition would not be able to govern the embattled country, and that's from America's top military commander. General Martin Dempsey warns that Syria will plunge deeper into civil war if the Assad regime fails, and he stressed the opposition elects the leverage to fill in for the current government or root out al-Qaeda groups in the country. Infighting is on the rise among the divided rebel factions inside Syria. While President Assad's forces are making significant giants, gains, rather, having just taken the key city of Homs after a two-year siege, the Western-backed umbrella group known as the Syrian National Coalition has been unable to unite the rebel factions. But the White House has still pledged fresh support for the opposition, as Gaynet Shikana reports. We're seeing a new push by the Obama administration to fulfill a goal that it declared three years ago to topple the Syrian president. Bashar Assad has announced that Syria will hold elections despite the war. The U.S. vehemently opposes those elections. Washington has already decided who the legitimate representatives of the Syrian people are. It's the Syrian opposition coalition. President Obama has met with the coalition leader, Ahmad Jarba, at the White House this week. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry told the rebels, we've wasted a year in the fight against Assad. The participants of the meeting said John Kerry made the remark in the context of a discussion about renewed efforts to coordinate the flow of both aid and weapons to the Syrian rebels. The French foreign minister was also in Washington this week, and he said he, quote, unquote, regretted that the U.S. had not bombed Syria as it threatened. All of this war talk amid the U.S. and Europe saying that they want to find a political solution to the crisis in Syria. We say there is no uh, military victor, meaning we, meaning the United States. There can be no po military solution. And yet every step that we're taking is a military step. Um, and, and so obviously what we're uh, setting up is longer uh, term conflict, more conflict. The UN envoy for Syria, Lakhdar Brahimi, has announced his resignation, expressing regret for his inability to forge a coherent international response to the humanitarian catastrophe unfolding in Syria. The Geneva talks have not led to a deal between the Syrian government and the opposition. Although the Syrian opposition has been largely unwilling to cut deals with the government of Bashar Assad, nonetheless, there have been instances of progress. Most recently, thousands of Syrians returned to war-battered parts of the central city of Homs after the rebels left under an evacuation deal with the government. But Washington seems keen to prompt the Syrian rebels to continue fighting instead of cutting deals, even though a deal could save thousands of lives. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekyan, RT. Well, the Syrian crisis escalated after last year's chemical attack in Aleppo killed dozens of people with the government and uh, the rebels blaming each other. In June, U.S. President Barack Obama upped the ante by authorizing a military aid to the Syrian rebels for the first time. And the crisis reached a peak two months later with Western leaders calling for military strikes on Syria, citing another controversial chemical attack as a red line. But just as the military intervention loomed large, a diplomatic breakthrough was brokered by Russia, which helped persuade Syria to give up its chemical arsenal. Damascus began handing over its stockpiles in October with an 8 percent, estimated 8 percent, left in the country by now, ahead of the deadline in June. The next step to de-escalate the crisis came in Geneva, where Syrian government and opposition officials sat down for talks for the first time. But the negotiations ultimately failed to break the deadlock as both sides reverted back to conflict. And now tension has shot back up with the White House hosting the Syrian opposition leader and pledging fresh support for the insurgency. Geopolitical analyst Brian Becker says the Syrian people are the ones paying the price for Washington's regime change ambitions. The Obama administration, in spite of the fact that its policy has completely failed, in spite of the fact that its policy of funding and fueling and arming and armed opposition to the Assad government with the idea that it would in invariably uh, succeed in over overthrowing the Assad government, in spite of those setbacks to its policies, it's hanging tough, so to speak, showing that it's bestowing the legitimacy or so-called legitimacy of the United States, certainly the power of the United States, with the armed opposition, in spite of the fact that the armed opposition is 
isn't winning on the battlefield, and, and, and as we can see, does not have the popular base of support necessary to oust the Assad government. So they're just continuing with the same script. The Assyrian people are the ones paying this terrible price in blood and treasure as the bleeding goes on. I think it's wrong.